Okay, welcome to a Monday morning, or yeah, mid-morning now, it's like 10 o'clock. Wanted to talk a little bit about the big cool down that we experienced yesterday. Temperatures dropped 10, 15, 20 degrees over where they had been on Friday and Saturday. Temperatures this week are going to just kind of hover. They're going to be just like they were today or what they were tomorrow, right through the week, but there'll be subtle variations. Fog is gonna get deeper, fog gets shallower, gets warmer, gets colder, that, but subtle. Jet stream is close enough to us that it's gonna send um, impulses just to the north of us, and I'll show you that as well. We'll look at uh, a bunch of stuff. We'll look at the fire danger. There's a concern for fire in far northern California as we go into tonight, tomorrow, and that brings up what I wanna talk about real quickly here is it's kind of the beginning of fire season and the news stations were all over last night you know fire season kind of treat it like it's um some monster or something you know new to california i mean it is fires are de terrifying especially i was up on that campfire in paradise years ago and i saw it firsthand and it was like holy smokes man this thing's alive but it's another story another day but what i wanted to mention was you know my one of my my undergraduate work at Berkeley focused a lot on climatology and I worked with Ormond Grange who was world famous climatologist and talked a lot about California disasters and um, fire earthquakes and flooding and one of the things we came upon was he said look we're in Berkeley Berkeley Hills he goes look up here look at the Claremont Hotel look at these areas up in the hills this is before the the Oakland Hills fire and he said you should never build there missions the the, the the native american tribes look where they built and where they built were places that were advantageous to surviving what is inevitable in california the history of the state in, at least in the last couple hundred years has been fires drought flood and earthquakes those four things and they don't go away not anytime soon anyway they've been around for a few hundred years they're going to probably be around for a few more hundred years and so you have to prepare for that. I personally have read a weird amount of California history just because it's fascinating in my family's history. And one of the things that strikes me the most is, especially in the early travelers, you know, before the gold rush, was how smoky the sky was. Because in the monsoonal season, in the periods in August, September, October, thunderstorms would come up, you know, moisture would come up from the Gulf of California and would create con convection which would create lightning strikes which would create fires which would burn because they didn't put them out right when i say they in this case the native americans or even the spanish for the most part just let them burn and so the forests of northern california were generally kept clean this is the last well let's see how this works out i think i got a, a map of this here bring it in but these are these are some of the areas that um, have burned since 2012 to 2021. And you can see, I mean, you see where they are, first of all. They're in the hills. They, these are areas that have recently burned. So when I look at the orange areas, I go, okay, wildfire is scary, but they've had some burns, so it's going to be a little bit cleaned out. It's the, the areas that are, are of concern to me are these areas in here, up around um, Grass Valley and Auburn and these areas. They haven't had a huge, well, they've had a couple, but these areas are significant for fire potential. We're seeing it in Manitoba now, up in Canada, even though it's sort of lush, and but it's dried out enough and the fuels haven't been cleaned out enough. They have the same issues up there. They're having these huge wildfire burns. So what does it all mean? Well, it means think about where you build, think about where you live, think about the foliage around your house, prepare for earthquakes, prepare for flooding if you live in a flood zone, and also, look at where the Native Americans built their, their villages. Like, the, look where the, well, and, and consequently, the Spanish put their missions. Um, there's 21 missions in California. They've been here for hundreds of years. One has been lost to fire, and that was in 1971. So they built essentially in places that were not, you're never immune to fire, earthquake, flood, drought, but you can minimize the impact. So... What did, what did I just say there? I think we just, sometimes we treat the environment as if it's a surprise. And it's not a surprise. It's what happens in the state of California. This is where you live. 
it is stunning, it is amazing, but you have earthquakes, fire, droughts, and floods. You just do, Mediterranean climate, dry summer, wet winter. Dry summer, wet winter. That's what we, we got, that means the summer, we're gonna get four to six, sometimes seven months of dry, and that creates low fuel moistures and blah, blah, blah. So, fire danger, just get used to it. Just get used to it and be more aware of the importance of fire in our ecosystem. There, I said it. Um, there's a lot more to that to unpack, but just makes you think a little bit, doesn't it? About kind of, okay, let's not treat fire. It's not always the enemy. It's scary, but it's not the enemy. It's kind of one of the, it's probably the thing that, you know, is, is helps cleanse the state for the most part. We'll talk about earthquakes some other time. Anyway, that's my thoughts. And now we're going to go to the weather. This is this morning. This is Mount Tamalpais. This is the fog. It has deepened out. It's actually gotten deeper than uh, it's right now. You see it kind of going away. That's because yes, lifting up. The inversion got up to about 2,800 feet today. So when that happens, slow down on us. When the inversion gets up like that, the marine layer kind of just disperses. And that's what happened today. We can look at the profiler and what you see, let's see if I can get this bad boy loaded up. Yeah, so I think we can see this. So here's time works this way, cross section of the atmosphere. Look how deep it was, it was deep last night, deepened out a little bit, well, it was deep yesterday, sorry, this is yesterday. And look at, the, look at this morning at about 7 a.m., up over 3,000 feet, which at that point, the inversion doesn't really exist. I mean, it does to some extent, but it's mixed out. So the very, that cool air has all been ushered inland. That is why temperatures significantly dropped yesterday. That's why there's not going to be much change again today. So deep marine layer, low pressure, kind of just tweaking through in the jet stream to the north. Here is the visible satellite image. And you can kind of see this is the low pressure right in here. See that? You can almost see this counterclockwise swirl, right? Right there. And that's what lifted the inversion. Lifted it enough that the fog went away here. And then we were just looking at uh, Mount Tamalpais. This fog's going away as well. And then Southern California, you see all the fog down along the coast. Not impacted by the low, be, not by this low, um, but by a high pressure that built in after that low left. All right, that was a lot. I love these pictures though, because you can you can see the low right here, and you can see the other low over here. The counterclockwise flow, and in between those areas are the high pressure zones. So interesting. That's an interesting feature. You know what's interesting? I just realized. I feel like this. That's smoke, right? This stuff. I think that's smoke. Hmm, hmm, could that be coming down from the, we should look at that. That, yeah, that looks like that's interesting. That could be smoke, that's upper level smoke and haze. I should check that out. I didn't really notice that feature until just now. So that could be coming off the Canadian continent as well. Um, red flag warning in Northern California in that area in red right there, that lasts through tonight. That's for these strong winds. Remember those winds we talked about, the wind warning? It's not an offshore flow necessarily, but it's kind of got a lot of north wind in it. It's not going to be hot, but it's going to be windy. And fuel moistures are low. Fuel moistures are a function of how much rain we've had and how long it's been dry, right? When the few, you know, like the brush out front your house, it burns slow when it's kind of green, but as it gets less green, it burns faster. And by the time we get to, to a month from now or three weeks from now, that stuff, fuel moistures are like single digit stuff. Right now, fuel moistures are probably 18, 20%. Um, so there are, these are the watches and warnings. These are for uh, today and tomorrow. So there's the red flag warning that gets dropped tonight. The storm warning, some rain uh, concerns, some water concerns, hydro issues. There's the smoke from the Minnesota fires. And I'm thinking there's some more smoke down here in the Carolinas. Uh, and then a red flag warning up here in this zone. So a lot of smoke, a lot of that time of year um, where you do start to see the smoke from the fires. These are the forecast highs for today. So what do you got? You got San Francisco at 78. You got Sacramento at 90. You got Bakersfield at 94. Los Angeles at 72. Temperatures tomorrow going to be the same. So the, in terms of the jet stream, it's going to just kind of fluctuate and slide pulses 
through to the north of us. This map, let's see if we can pick this out. I wonder if I, should I do it? I'm gonna do it only because we're friends. I'm gonna see if I can, let's see if I can get a bigger satellite radar. I'm gonna see if I can get a bigger, there we go, okay. Let's take a peek here. Can I loop that? I think I can, yeah. Let's loop that. I'm looking for that smoke plume. See what I'm saying? Doesn't look like, man, that was different. Huh. There might be some fires burning elsewhere. Okay. I just was that smoke we saw earlier. Um, this is the vorticity map, and this is going to show the pulses riding along the jet stream. Here's the jet stream right here, kind of, you know, roughly. See how they, I just picked where the lines are closest together? So there's the jet stream. And so these areas of red are vorticity and yellow and even green ride along that jet stream and our areas of instability of lift of of um, uh, wind shear things air mixing it's not stable like an inversion but it's actually kind of spinning um, and in this case you call positive vorticity it spins in this case counterclockwise always counterclockwise actually and here's another area of positive vorticity or a zone of positive vorticity so all this is PVA, positive vorticity advection. And then these other areas, these greens are areas of negative vorticity. So positive vorticity is in, unstable. So if that makes sense, this will make more sense. You see where we are, you see there's our reason for the deep marine layer today. And then you see it kind of just go down the coast and then, but you see all the activity over us? That's Thursday, that's Friday, that's Saturday. Right? And then it looks like it wants to warm a little bit on the weekend. So, right? That's really, this pattern is, I would call this a very dynamic pattern, especially right here as you get into, I hope you don't have a wedding on June 13th. Not that that's going to go bad, but that's, you know, that's rain if that happens. Um, but the, the main takeaway from this, without going out too far, is that there's, there's energy sliding in on the jet stream that's going to keep us from getting really hot. It's going to keep the winds going, the breezy conditions, and the mild conditions. We can look at the red flag warning and why it's there by doing this. This is humidity. Just as you think green is wet, brown is dry. And as we go into, this is GFS, as we go into to this afternoon, you see we're the, um, in this area here, 10% RH, 9% RH, single digit. RH, and you see out in the Nevada desert and then down around Big Joe's, so this is really dry, right? So that's where when you get wind, which you see the wind, perhaps you can see the wind offshore, see the wind barbs going this way. So that's a northerly wind. Not so windy here, but it is definitely a compressional wind, which is drying out this area. So 9% humidity is very low when you compare that to hmm, Santa Rosa at 45% humidity. So there is a red flag warning in effect, and it's going to be for these strong winds in the very dry conditions. Okay, so I'm going to sneeze. I think I'm going to sneeze, and I hope I don't sneeze. You know how you do that? It's like <laughs> all the years I was on TV. I think I told you guys this one time, but somebody told me once, you, go, you can't sneeze on TV. It's physically impossible. Mm -hmm. And so I would literally think, okay, three, two, one, you're, you're on or whatever. And I would be, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to sneeze. And I would never, I've never sneezed on TV. And I didn't just sneeze then. Isn't that weird? Hmm. And I had to sneeze. Um, riveting. Just riveting. Uh, this is Mount Whitney Portal. Um, Beautiful shot. I love this camera. Like if I could get it, if I could get, wouldn't it be fun to have a house full of like plasmas, like, or just walls that were just like tiles that had live pictures in them like that and just have a room full of California live pictures because that's stunning to me. Beautiful California, high desert. Mount Whitney is, so there, when I said yesterday, I didn't clarify well, but 270 is west, due west. So you got a, you got a clock, right? And so when you're um, at zero degrees or 360 degrees, you're at due north, 270 is due west, and 180 is due south. Um, you probably knew that, but when you're, so when you look at these, you can see, oh, we're looking due west, which is, I think Whitney's right up in here. So yeah, Mount Whitney today, temperatures up there are going to be in the 70s. 
This is Mount Shasta today. Does look a little smoky. Hmm. Did you see the aurora last night? That's Franny. I did not. I did not see the aurora last night. But um, I did um, see the cloud cover that came in. But what I was getting at here is look at the smoke. I think that's smoke. Maybe control burned somewhere, but maybe that feeds into what we were looking at. And then Mammoth Mountain, I, I love these people. I just love it. I'm like, okay, it's Monday. You're skiing. It's Sunday. I mean, it's not, I'm sorry. It's Monday. You're skiing. And it's snowy and, or not snowy, but there's enough snow to ski on. You work with me. Um, I like this camera. They're going to move to that really cool shot, so I'm just going to hang on this. Learned a little something about fire today. Learned a little bit about California. And if you do read California history, especially the early explorers, they talk about all the smoke that was in the air. And the Native Americans used fire to burn off their crops, so they'd get a lot of smoke. Uh, but they also just, it was always smoke because there were wildfires that had started from lightning strikes or other, you know, campfires. So they just let burn. They didn't, the miners didn't put them out. Right, so there was always smoke in California. And when the, one of the accounts, one of the best accounts I can remember was, well, a number of them talking about like Mount Diablo when the French went up there to map. Mount Diablo was a really awesome spot because it was a place you could, you, know, you could see the Sierra Nevada. When you, in the old days when the French, the map, they were great map makers when they were making maps. They loved Mount Diablo because it was had the farthest, one of the farthest sight lines you could get. And if you could get, uh, a, a right number of points and a distance away, you could map. You could begin mapping. And the larger the area, the, the easier it was on, on you. You didn't have to travel as many places. So, um, yeah, a lot of smoke. Okay, there's no smoke in Mammoth right now. I'll bet, it's, I'll bet it's fun this morning. Sometimes when the snow, you know when it does that thing, when it gets a little, um, gets a little uh, soft, right that's kind of fun you feel like it's like hero snow right you can't you can't catch an edge uh, especially on a snowboard oh my god okay surf's coming up surf uh, today tomorrow um tides are they're moving pretty good and that offshore wind's going to have an impact on the near shore waves you can kind of see it too it's a little jumbled up right now a little crunchy and then we'll go to the birds and i they have not flown yet i am told now that they are both females sunny and gizmo and somebody else I was reading on the, the group that there's like a little chat on this thing, but they were saying the same thing I was noticing that there it's interesting, the relationship between all these birds, how it's changed and how these two characters, Sonny and Gizmo, both girls are, um, are kind of, they're sort of, they're just, it's changed. Like it's just, it's like a teenager and their parents, right? It's just, you can see it just changed. And mom and dad give them a little room and are kind of cool with them. They need to take a little room. That's, I believe that's Gizmo, and I believe he's four days older. The big one, yeah, yeah. But my, I heard that Sonny is eating robustly right now and actually being more aggressive for food. Awesome. Okay. So don't build, don't build, uh, don't build on ridge lines. I mean, I get it. I want a view too. I used to live on a ridge line. I'm embarrassed to say it was beautiful. I'm not embarrassed to say it was beautiful. I had this awesome view, in Marin County, and I loved it and I miss it. But boy, every time I smelled smoke, I was like, you're the, you're the, you know, ridge lines are bad because this fire burns uphill. Okay, that's a lot. A little bit of everything. Have a great day. We will talk to you back here tomorrow. See ya.